Hey everyone, it's Exalent, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the state of Counter-Strike 2. So as you all may know, Counter-Strike 2 has had a pretty rough launch in my opinion. And funny enough, Counter-Strike 2 is what brought me out of my CSGO hiatus. I had stopped playing Counter-Strike during Operation Riptide and returned to CSGO with my group of friends in March of 2023. And that was mostly because of the rumors of CS2 releasing soon. I had quit personally playing CSGO because of the lack of updates and new content, plus the state of matchmaking was the worst I've probably ever seen in any video game, especially for NA. And hearing the rumors that CS2 was around the corner made me want to really grind and get ready for CS2's release. I had a lot of fun revisiting CSGO after so many years, it felt very fresh and new again. And I really enjoyed the final days of CSGO and I played almost every single day from March up until CS2's release. And it's no secret that we all thought that Counter-Strike 2 would launch with at least the same content as CSGO and most likely even more content. I think most of us were expecting an operation. But unfortunately Valve released a bare bones version of Counter-Strike built in a new engine where we were basically the test pigs. Initially, I was fine with this as I was really just excited to try out the future of Counter-Strike and I played through the limited test and into the final release. And up until November, this was the point where I stopped playing due to various issues with subtick, performance, cheater issues, and the lack of meaningful updates. So recently, I went back and read through some of the patch notes where I'd stopped playing until now. And it seems like they were mostly working on improving the subtick performance, system performance, and patching a lot of map exploits and issues. And this ultimately got me wanting to play CS2 again. So loading into my first game back felt pretty good. And I instantly noticed how smooth everything felt. No more micro stuttering, freezing, crashing, weird subtick stuff. And the movement even felt more like CSGO and less kind of jittery and less accurate. So overall, I would say that I'm actually enjoying Counter-Strike 2 in its current state. But you know, the more I think about it, the more I realize that the major problems with CS2 is still there. And that's really what I want to discuss today, so let's go ahead and get into it. The main issue with Counter-Strike 2 is still the lack of a proper anti-cheat. I would go as far to even say that the cheating problem is even worse in CS2 than it was in CSGO, due to the incentive of the Premier Leaderboard. And the ultimate fact is that VAC is inadequate. Cheat developers are constantly developing new ways to bypass VAC, and many cheats in CSGO have gone years without ever being detected. And CS2 still remains, in my opinion, one of the easiest games to cheat on and not get banned. Valve has spoken against creating a kernel level anti-cheat, and I will say there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to a kernel level anti-cheat. A kernel level anti-cheat does not guarantee a free environment of cheats as cheat developers usually will find a way to bypass it at some point. But just take a look at Valorant's anti-cheat. It operates at kernel level, it gives them deeper access to the system and potentially allowing it to detect more sophisticated cheats. I've even seen GamerDoc on Twitter gloat about shutting down DMA cheats which is essentially hardware cheats that don't interact with the game whatsoever, so it's really hard to actually catch these. And it's really difficult for me to grasp why Valve doesn't have a better solution already. Counter-Strike is one of the most popular and well-respected esports titles of all time, and Counter-Strike is really fun to play. It's fun to watch and has a huge financial backing from all the cases and skins that they sell, uh, not including everything that's sold on Steam. They have sponsors, tournaments, and the appeal to games like Counter-Strike is the fact that if some random person grinds the competitive ladder long enough and they play well enough, they can actually make it and become a pro player. And when you compare it to Valorant's anti-cheat solution, it's honestly just downright embarrassing. And most of you all might disagree with my opinion on this, but I believe cheating will always be a problem in Counter-Strike because they haven't bothered to fix it in the past 10 years, and I just don't really see why they would try now, especially since they're still pushing the AI anti-cheat. And even now, we actually are seeing AI cheats, where people are coding cheats that can imitate a player and play a deathmatch so perfect that you honestly can't really tell that it's an AI unless you sit there and watch it, you know, mess up every once in a while. So I think Valve is really behind when it comes to this, 
and they're honestly just not going to get anywhere with their AI anti-cheat because people will always be ahead of that and create something better. The second main issue with Counter-Strike 2 has got to be the matchmaking system. Both Premier and Competitive are in a pretty bad state currently, and they definitely wasn't launched as well. So starting with Premier, the main issues for me is the significant skill disparity within teams. I constantly solo queue into games with vastly different teammate ELO ratings, and Premier currently just seems like a coin flip of getting paired with Silver teammates or Global Elite teammates. And it would be understandable if this issue happened, you know, every once in a while, but it really does feel like a 50-50 coin flip. The second issue with the team balance is the lack of penalty for five stacks. So the meta for Premier currently is to play in a five stack and you'll most likely go against solo players. And this gives you a better chance at winning, obviously, due to you having more consistent team comms and team chemistry versus a team of randoms. So stacking that on top of the cheating issue running rampant in Premier due to the leaderboard incentive, it makes for a very frustrating matchmaking experience. And if it's that frustrating for me, I can just imagine how a new player feels when they're trying to play matchmaking. I'm sure they get absolutely rolled in 50% of their games. Now let's talk about the competitive mode because it has its own set of issues. And the first issue I think is the requirement to win 10 games per map to display a rank for that map specifically. I think a great change for this would be to require 10 games total played to establish a rank and not just wins. I feel like most people don't want to do the time and grind on every single map. So this means that the match balance is just going to be worse for longer because less people are likely going to be queuing competitive over Premier since competitive is just not a very fun mode right now. And what I've noticed is before you receive a rank, the games can go from playing against silvers to playing against face at level 10s. And the skill disparity became much less noticeable once I finally did receive a rank. But getting 10 wins with random skilled lobbies is very time consuming and frustrating to say the least. And it took me way longer than I would have liked to. You also currently cannot see your teammates ranks or enemy ranks when the game ends like you could in CSGO. Meaning this mode is mostly useless for those who want to feel like they're improving. Because what's the point of a competitive mode where you can't tell what type of skilled players that you're actually going against? I've also not seen anyone rank above Master Guardian 1 in competitive yet. Which means that rank distribution still needs a lot of work. So I definitely think that they should have brought in the rank calibration from CSGO. It's not the perfect solution, but I think it would be definitely much better than what we currently have. And I would really like to be able to see my teammates and enemies ranks. I'm not sure why this was removed in the first place. Maybe it's just so they can hide the fact of how unbalanced the games really are. And in addition to this, we're still missing a proper net graph. There is no command to clear decals. And we can't remove weapon bobbing. And we cannot play with the left hand view model. And something that just really bothers me is that you cannot disable the first person tracers. And these were all things that we had access to customize in CSGO. And in my opinion, being forced to use tracers just adds to the visual noise to the game. And it makes it harder to stay on target. Combine that with the weapon muzzle flash, the smoke now rolling out the side of the gun, dust flying all over the surface when your bullets hit it. And it makes CS2 seem like you have cataracts when you're trying to spray at enemies. And I feel like this is the main reason people complain that their spray is felt different in CS2 than CSGO. And I can definitely attest to this because I recently went back and played CSGO before they end the live support. And everything on there just seems much better. The visibility on players when you're shooting, the visibility on maps versus the character model, things like that just seem even better in CSGO. Even though in CS2 they've made a lot of lighting changes to try to combat the visibility issues. And then the icing on the cake is that we still have the missing content and no communication or roadmap from Valve. It really just seems like a big slap in the face. But in my opinion, the core game now feels and plays pretty great. And I will continue playing despite the issues that I outlined above. And I think that CS2 is still a very enjoyable game. I'm not trying to be super negative about it. And I do think that it's still one of the better first person shooters that you can play today. And really at this point, all I can hope is that Valve ramps things up in 2024 
but I feel as though we should be realistic and understand that the cheating and poor matchmaking system is most likely here to stay. I would love to have your opinion below in the comments, so feel free to agree or disagree. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.